Welcome to this second episode in the navigation series. Today, we're going to learn how to navigate to dialogue destinations. So I have a problem. I like donuts a lot, but I also have a bad memory. I like to remember the donuts that I enjoyed and the donuts that I don't want to have again, but how do I have that information available if I don't remember? I know, let's build an app. So I envision this application that has two screens in it. One is a list of the donuts that I've enjoyed or not, and the other is a simple form where I can edit information about each of those donuts. But there's a special thing here. I want that editing screen to actually be a dialogue. I want it to pop up on top of the other UI. Now, I'm used to the navigation component being able to navigate to different fragments that swap in and out for each other inside the nav host fragment, but this is a different situation. There's going to be a list of donuts and a dialogue writing on top. So how does that work? So it turns out that the navigation component also enables navigating to dialogues, not just the fragments that are swapping in and out of the nav host fragment. So why don't we take a look at some code now, build an app, and let's see how this works. First, I'll show how to set up the basics in a new application. Then I'll show the app that I wrote so you can see where it's all leading. In Android Studio 3.6 and later, you can select one of the templates to give yourself a head start with a navigation component project. I like to do this because it adds all the infrastructure for the stuff I need for navigation, and then I can just remove the pieces that don't apply to my situation. So let's do that now and create a basic activity. So we'll create a new Android Studio project. We'll select basic activity. We'll call this nav sample. And then wait for that to come up. All right, so now our project is all loaded. Let's take a look at the navigation graph. We go down here and see that it has created two destinations for us. Both of these are fragments which is great, but it's not what I needed. I want to navigate to a dialog. So in order to do that, first of all, let's create that dialog. Let's go into the layout resource directory. We'll create a new resource file. We'll call this my dialog. And inside of my dialog, so we have a constraint layout, I'm just going to add a text view as a placeholder here. I will very cleverly call it placeholder. I will constrain it to live within the center of its container. All right, our resource is created. Now let's create the code that inflates that resource. So we'll create a new Kotlin file class. I'll call this my dialog. class, my dialog, we're going to extend bottom sheet dialog fragment, and we're going to override on create view. But instead of returning whatever the superclass wants to create, we're going to inflate from that resource file that we created. So we're going to call inflator dot inflate of r dot layout dot my dialog. We're going to inflate it into the container that was passed in. We'll pass false. And we're all set. So now we can return to the nav graph and we can create a new destination here. So we're going to create a new destination and we're going to create it of this my dialog. And you'll see that it is creating a fragment. We actually want to create it as a dialogue. I've found this to be a little unpredictable. Sometimes it magically knows that it's a dialogue and sometimes it doesn't. So we're going to go ahead and create that destination here, but then quickly go into the XML file and say, actually, this one is a dialogue. And then we're going to go back to the design view. We're going to create an action that leads us to that dialogue. And now we have a couple of different actions there, which is fine. All we're doing is defining the edges in the graph. We're not telling it when to trigger uh, navigation along those edges. For that, we go into first fragment, and we can see that by default, the template, template gave us code here that navigates us to the second fragment. What we're going to do is replace that with the action that we just created. And we're going to say, actually, I want to navigate to my dialog. 
So now we can build and run. So it built, it's installing our application, launching it, and now we can see that default first fragment that we start from. We click on the button and we navigate to the dialog. You see this little tiny placeholder down there? That is our bottom sheet dialog fragment popping into place. It is not going into the nav host fragment as is the default behavior for most net fragments that you navigate to. Instead, it is navigating to that dialog that exists outside of that container. All right, so that was our sample app. Now let's go take a look at the donut tracking app and you'll see how it works in practice. So now we're in our donut tracking app and we can go to the navigation graph and we can see that there are two destinations here. And just like before in our sample app, we have the default destination, the home destination, and then we have the dialogue destination that we're going to. And the way that we trigger that is in the code for the recycler view, we have a couple of different ways of getting there. One is when the fab, the floating action button is clicked, then we navigate using directions that we set up in the nav graph uh, to the dialog fragments. Um, then we also have the ability to navigate there to edit one of the items. So the thing we want to do in the donut app is we want to be able to enter new information. So if they click on that fab, we want to enter information about a new donut. If they click on an existing item in the list, then we also want to be able to edit the information in that existing item. And that happens here. So we create the donut list adapter with two lambdas. One of those is for editing a donut and the other is for deleting one of those donuts. So if we take a look at that constructor, then we can see the lambdas are passed in here. And uh, we can see that when someone clicks on the appropriate item, uh, then we call that lambda for editing. And in the on edit, uh, then we navigate appropriately. So now we can run our application. Now we can click on the fab, and that will allow us to enter information about a new donut. New donut. And I could type information about that, or I could just give it a rating, and that adds it as an item in our recycling view. And if we click on this item, that calls that lambda that we were looking at there, and I want to add information in here and say, fantastic experience. and then click on done, and it will add that information to the database. It'll update the information. That's it for today's episode. We saw really quickly how to build a new application for navigation component and how to navigate to a different kind of destination, a dialog, and not just another fragment that swaps in and out inside the nav host fragment. In future episodes, we will continue building on the donut tracking application because it is so important and how to add other features from navigation component along the way.